Hello and warm welcome to today's webinar. We're going to talk about the open source bit in interface and I'm joined today by Marcel Reuter. And before I pass on the word to Marcel, I just want to take you through the webinar tool very briefly. So you have the webinar tool here and there's a control panel and up at the top corner you have a red button. If you click on that red button, you can open and close uh, this uh, function. Further down, you have a question box. If you ask your question or put your questions in this box, they will be forwarded to the webinar team here, and then I will have them forwarded to me so I can read them out at the end of the session where we'll have our Q&A uh, part. So um, just before um, we move on to the rest here, I just want to ask you to ask your questions, and if we run over in terms of time, we will always record this, and you will get the questions and answers as part of your recording. The next function of the webinar tool is the screens. You have two screens. The top screen shows the actual presenter and the bottom the actual presentation. And you have a function in the middle which is a scroll bar which you can pull up and down so you can decide which one you want to see in a larger mode. But please be careful when you use this function. Don't go all the way up or all the way down because you might risk to lose uh, one of the pictures. So just pay attention to that. So without further uh, notice, I want to introduce you to Marcel Reuter, who's going to take us through today's presentation. So welcome, Marcel. Thank you very much, Henrik. And welcome also from my side. My name is Marcel Reuter, and today I'm going to introduce you to the open source BIS interface. I will start with a short introduction about myself for those who haven't seen or met me before. We'll then provide you an overview about the BIS interface platform and then continue with, with going a bit more into detail about the BIS interface, BIS safety and BIS line, and also provide you the latest news um, about, about the BIS interface. All right, so about myself, I'm a sales and application engineer at IC House, and also I'm the managing director of BIS Association. My focus is on the BIS interface itself, so that means the BIS C protocol the safety profile, and this line, the one cable technology. Um, at IC House, I'm also responsible for the BIS interface bridge components um, that simplify the implementation of the BIS interface into your devices. All right, a short overview about the BIS interface platform. So when we talk about the BIS interface itself, we talk about the BIS-C protocol and BIS stands for a serial synchronous interface that enables a continuous bidirectional data transmission. It is usually used in, in, in applications like motion control and motor feedback because it enables a high-speed isochronous process data transmission. The safety is a profile definition for the BIS interface and enables using the BIS interface in safety critical applications up to ZIL-3. This line, on the other hand, is the one cable technology of BIS interface. It enables a robust power and data transmission over only two or four wires. The most important thing, and that's why we call it the BIS interface platform, is that the different aspects are fully compatible to each other and the features that we use in this interface can also be used in the safety and this line. A bit more information about the BIS interface platform. It was introduced by IC House in 2002 and is meanwhile managed by BIS Association. It has almost 600 licenses all over the world that have implemented the BIS interface. You can see here the BIS Association members and these are typically manufacturers um, for sensors, for motors, for connectivity, or also service providers that develop and um, marketing these products. All right, now I would like to go a bit more into detail about the BIS interface. Um, the typical hardware setup is a point-to-point -point configuration. That, is, that means that there's one BIS master and one BIS slave device. The BIS master sends its clock signal to the slave and the slave responds with its data signal to the master. This setup is hardware compatible to the SSI interface 
And typically, an RS-422 standard is used to ensure the transmission between master and slave. This enables also bus configuration. That means you can connect multiple slaves in a daisy chain to the bus master. Besides the clock and data line, um, there's an additional MO line, which is used by the master to configure the system's processing time or also to transmit actuator data to the slaves. Here you can see the BIS frame. It usually starts with a latch point, which is a, a simultaneous data capture event for the whole daisy chain. Um, we, have several, we can have several data channels. Usually there's one data channel per slave, and each data channel can contain up to 64 bit of process data. The master is able to measure and compensate the line delay. This enables high um, transmission rates, even on long transmission lines. The master is also able to consider the slave's processing time. So if the slave requires time after the latch event to um, prepare and provide the process data, it can simply delay the start bit and therefore request processing time. And then there is a feature why we call it um, the bidirectional interface. And this is the control data communication. So there is one bit of control data transmitted from master to slave and one bit of control data transmitted from slave to master in each frame. And um, there's another control data frame which contains several um, typical process data frames. You can use this control data, for example, to perform register commu communication, which can be um, a calibration procedure of a sensor, configuration of a sensor, or to read out the electronic data sheet of a sensor, or it can also be um, temperature data that is stored in the slave's memory. A couple of months ago, we have introduced BIS Certified, which is the certification service for BIS devices. We want to ensure that the BIS C protocol um, is, um, is uh, implemented in a standardized way. So we want to ensure that there is a compliance with the BIS C protocol for all BIS C devices. And we also want to ensure interoperability of different devices. During certification, all of the BIS features will be verified which includes, for example, the physical layer, the BIS frame itself, um, the control data communication, and also the memory mapping within the slave's registers. Here you can see the test platform that is used by the certifier, Artisan. Um, in the front picture, you can see a prototype of a um, certification device, and here a, um, a this slave is connected to the device, which is the first certified device from Positel Fraber. In the back, you can see the GUI, which is used by the certifier um, in order to start, this uh, to start test procedures, but also to collect the data that has been measured and to display the measured data and data content graphically. The software is also used to generate a report and this report will help you, the customer, to, um, to develop proper implementations of a BIS interface. The service is provided as an independent service um, and not by a competitor. So if you, if you provide confidential information, this will be safe. You can use then, after successful certification, the certificate itself for marketing purposes and also to show your customers that, um, that the interoperability with other devices is ensured. So if you have any further questions about the BIS certified, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with Artisan directly. Um, they are located in Germany, and um, here you can see the website, and on the website you will find the contact details. All right, 
Now I would like to go a bit deeper into the safety profile. So when it comes to safety applications, uh, we typically have um, different hardware components that communicate with each other. While it is uh, possible to evaluate the hardware components and um, calculate an error or a failure rate, this is typically not um, possible with the transmission line itself. Um, in that case, we use the black channel concept. That means we do not evaluate the um, transmission line itself, but we use the communication protocol um, to ensure proper communication and to detect failures. And this is where BIS safety comes into place, which is the profile definition for the BIS interface. So it is 100% compatible to the BIS interface because it's just a profile definition. It uses the common BIS interface features, such as daisy chaining of several sensors and CRC polynomials, um, which protect the data content. Um, the safety is certified by TUV for, uh, for safety critical applications up to ZIL3. And although the focus is on safety, it still enables very fast cycle times. Now I would like to take a closer look on the hardware. Here you can find a hardware example. There is a safety drive that consists of a standard uh, BIS drive, um, which contains usually the BIS master and is extended by a safety extension. So the safety block contains a BIS monitor, which observes the data lines, and it also performs the frame data checks. And on the slave side, we have a BIS safety sensor, which usually contains of two independent uh, position words, um, which are generated by one or two sensors. And these position words, um, um, uh, there are two position words, the control position word, which is used by the standard drive to perform the motor control. And both position words, control position word and safety position word, are used by the safety extension to perform the safety checks. The control position word itself consists of the multi-turn and single-turn information in a rotary encoder. It can also be linear information of a linear encoder. And uh, the control position word also includes an error bit and a warning bit, and the whole data content is protected by a six-bit CRC. The safety position word also contains the redundant information, so multi-turn and single-turn information, or the linear position information, um, but usually uses a lower resolution because it is only used for the safety checks. It also includes the error and the warning bit and the six-bit sign of life counter, which is used to detect, for example, missing frames. The whole data content is then protected by a particularly um, protective 16-bit CRC, and um, which enables a very robust transmission. So what is new about the safety? Well, the standard got updated in the beginning of the year, so we are currently in the process of recertification, and that means that the documentation that we provide um, through IC House um, for example, the profile uh, description and the implementation manual um, will be updated soon. Uh, we have had already our discussions with the TUV and um, he has already proven and accepted our concept in general. Um, so we expect the recertification to be completed at the end of the year. Okay. Now I would like to focus a bit on this line. Uh, we have seen the BIS C setup, hardware setup, which contains at least two pairs of differential wires for the clock and the data line, plus the power supply lines. So we need at least six lines. With this line, we are able to go, go a step further to transmit the, the power and the data content over just two wires. So this is what we call a one cable technology standard. Um, it uses a fixed, clock, uh, a fixed frequency 
of 12.5 megahertz and it uses a clock recover to ensure accurate timings. Also in BISLINE you can connect multiple de slave devices to one BISLINE master and one of its most interesting features in BISLINE is the forward error correction. It ensures that we can correct data that had been corrupted during transmission. This feature increases the data availability at the master site tremendously. And of course, we will see that later on, it is also 100% compatible with PC. Here you can see the typical BISLINE hardware setup. It consists of a BISLINE master on the left and a BISLINE slave on the right. Here you can also see a two-wire setup, which will be probably used in most cases for this line. Um, since you reduce the cable costs enorm enormously. And um, what you can also see here is that there are additional components required on the BISLINE master and slave side to perform the coupling of the DC and BAC content. If you do not have a space on your PCBs to ensure a, a two-wire communication since coupling capacitors and inductors require space, then you can use the four-wire um, topology. Here, power and data are, are separate uh, lines and therefore you need more lines within your cable. What you can also see here is the typical application for this line uh, that we use the C slaves, so the C sensors that are directly connected to the BISLINE uh, slave block and then converted to BISLINE. Correspondi corresponding to the picture before, we have a typical BISLINE fra frame uh, on this picture. On the top, you can see the process data request um, that is sent by a control unit to the BISLINE master. And below, you can see the BIS line signal. On the bottom, you can see the BIS C signals, so the clock signal and the data signal. The BIS line frame starts with a robust start signal. That means that um, the start symbol can even be identified by the slave if one or two bits are flipped. There is another symbol, the rec request delay symbol, which transmits the delay between the process data request and the, uh, and the line signal. This is transferred to the BIS-C slave and therefore you minimize the jitter of the system. As described before, this line is fully compatible to BIS-C and this is shown on this picture. So also the register communication, so one bit per frame from the master to the slave and one bit per frame from the slave to the master is transmitted. And last but not least, we have a data content that is protected by the forward error correction. This can be either the actuator data sent from the master to the slave or the sensor data sent from the slave to the master. Well, what is new about this line? Um, there will be an evaluation set up in the beginning of the next year. It will be provided by IC House, um, and you can see the picture of, uh, of, an example implementation, uh, of an example evaluation set up on the right side. So there will be a BISLINE master device, um, an adapter that can be connected to the USB port of your PC, and that is then uh, through, the con through the transmission line connected to the BISLINE slave module. This is called the BL3M. On the BISLINE slave module, there is an ICBL component from IC house, and this transfers um, the data from BC to BISLINE and vice versa. Uh, what you can see here is a BC slave that is simply connected to the, to the line to generate position data and transfer it to the PC. I recommend you to get in touch with me and um, to discuss your application so uh, that we can reserve your evaluation kit, uh, kit right now. I also want to um, provide you a hint. 
um, for the upcoming year. So there will be a webinar, probably during springtime, and there we will go into detail about this line, about applications, and also the evaluation setups. So that's my presentation for today. Thank you very much. And now I hand over to Henrik. Thank you, Marcel. This is very informative. So I have a couple of questions for you at the end. So mm -hmm. um, let me just read out the first one for you. Can I com combine BIS safety with BIS line? Yes, so that is possible. As we have seen before, BIS safety uses the black channel concept, and the black channel concept can also include the BIS line. OK, excellent. Thank you. The next question is about this new um, eval kit. So can I connect a standard BIS C encoder to the eval kit, the new one? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is possible. We have seen an example before, so an example with an evaluation setup from, uh, from IC House. But you can also connect an encoder to this module. OK, and I have the last question for you as well. If I'm interested in uh, doing a BIS certification, how much will it cost me, mm -hmm. roughly? OK. Yeah, so um, the, the certifier certification is performed by Artisan, the company. So the details have to be, um, have to be negotiated with Artisan directly. Um, but it will be roughly about 5,000 euro for uh, certification. Thank you, Marcel. I actually got a last question in just for the moment. So let me read out that one for you as well. Mm -hmm. Then we can conclude. So can I use the BISLINE master USB adapter for the two-wire and four-wire mode? Yes, this is also possible. Um, we have sh uh, shown only an example with a four-wire setup, but the BISLINE master can also be used for the two-wire setup. Thank you. That was very helpful. So thank you for attending, and uh, we look forward to see you soon. And stay safe, and look out for our next webinars, which we'll do in the spring. So thank you very much, and bye-bye. Thank you, and bye-bye.